Hi. Sometimes you want to make rhythms that escape the traditional 4-4 beats found in most step sequencers. Maybe you want a rhythm of 7 beats every 9 steps, or 5 beats every 17 steps. These unusual time signatures are often found in world music. Combining different time signatures on different tracks will give you some very interesting polyrhythms. But how do you create these unusual rhythms on the classic 16-step sequencer found on most commercial gear, like this Electron Digitone? Well, this is where this little magic cable comes in. This is the RetroKit's k 2 Smart MIDI cable. But don't be fooled, this is no ordinary cable. Hidden inside this little orange enclosure is a tiny computer. One you can program to mangle MIDI signals that flow through the cable into anything you want. So today I will show you how to use the k 2 and the Digicone to create some very unusual emerging polyrhythms. So let's get started. The k 2 is powered over MIDI. So all we have to do is connect it between the in and out ports on our Digiton and it'll get its power from the MIDI connections. Be sure to connect the orange end to MIDI in and the black end to MIDI out. First thing we want to do is load up some interesting samples. So for this demonstration, I've loaded up four tracks on the Digiton across four patterns with different samples. There's um, kicks on this track. And some synths. Nothing too special, you can pick anything you want. Now, the k 2 is controlled from the MIDI track. So on track one, I'm going to use this to actually send control messages to control this cable. The cable listens on MIDI channel 10. So I've enabled channel 10 here on track one. And this is where it will listen for control messages. Next, I want to define the length of the sequence, which the k 2 will generate. So to do this, we enable program change, and I've set this to 17. That means 17 steps. I chose 17 because it creates uh, non-standard time signatures, and very quickly you will hear some interesting rhythms emerge. Now, smaller numbers here will create shorter sequences, and you'll hear the notes repeat more frequently. Larger numbers create longer sequences, which are ideal for slower ambient pieces. Now, the k 2 can send notes to eight tracks in parallel, and each track can have a different rhythm of notes laid out across those 17 steps. But how do we specify which rhythm maps to which track? Luckily, the folks at RetroKits have made this easy for us. The k 2 listens for MIDI control change codes 73-77, which correspond to the default set on the Digitact and Digitone, 70 to 77 here on the AMP page. And these are used to define how often a given note will trigger on a given track. So if we set MIDI uh, CC70 to the value of, say, 32 here, that would correspond to every 32 out of 128 uh, steps, in other words, a 4-4 beat. So it'll trigger a note every four steps. But if we have a track length set to, say, 17, it means we will trigger four notes over 17 steps, which means some notes will arrive at a fractional step. And it's this that gives you these very interesting emerging rhythms. Now, which of these control codes correspond to which tracks? Well, again, they've made it pretty easy. The k 2 is hardwired to send notes to channels one, MIDI channels 1 through 8, corresponding to each of these control codes. And I'm only going to use channels 1 through 4, because the Digitone only has four tracks. So, CC70 corresponds to MIDI channel 1, which corresponds to track 1. CC71 corresponds to MIDI channel 2, corresponds to track 2, and so on. So on the filter page, we're going to set the relative frequencies 
of the note triggers on each of track one, two, three, and four. And as we play live, we'll just adjust these, and then you'll be able to hear different rhythms emerge on different tracks. So finally, we're ready to play. Let's get started. As you can see, very interesting rhythms emerge very quickly, and you can jump between patterns to vary the sounds as they play, and do all the standard live performance tricks with filters and reverbs that you would normally do while playing a box like this. I'll be exploring more with this amazing little cable in future videos, so hit the subscribe button to stay updated, and hit like if this video is helpful to you. Please leave comments or more questions for me on the video or anything else uh, I was covering here or request for future videos down in the comments section. Thanks very much for watching.